Hello, my name is Xavier Mercado, and this is Spearhead Conversations. Today, we are with a special guest, the official visual editor of Spearhead Conversations. I've known him since we were babies. We've grown up to be men. He has done amazing things out in the city of angels. Um... His work is undeniably great. Um, and you've, you, if you've been following, you understand why. He's behind the magic, behind the look of this show. But um, enough of me talking. Without further ado, Stephen Van Plu. What up, man? Thanks for having me. Th- Welcome to the City of Angels, dude. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Dog. I'm so I'm I'm honestly, this is this is this is one that I've man. <laughs> I, it's first time on the West Coast, best coast. You know, you're, you're gonna we'll get you we'll show you around a little bit and have you experience a little bit of Los Angeles. Well, yeah, man. In the first 24, I've already uh, <laughs> <laughs> got Fox 11. Yep, yeah, oh yeah, 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 we <laughs> and then and then when you sit next to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Shout out Bob's Big Boys, Celebrity Central. <laughs> it has been uh it has honestly been great. Yeah, it's good. It's been a good 24 hours for you. Yeah, man. Um, you still got a few more days left, so like we do. <laughs> We're making the best of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy we finally get to do this episode. It's been a long time coming. Oh, it has. I mean... Um, it's a little more fitting that you're here instead of me being in Milwaukee. For sure. I, it's just... Yeah. It's it seemed more, only right. It seemed only right. So here we are. Um, yeah, man. Let's get. Let's jump into it. Let's dive right into this thing. Well, all right. Where were you born? <laughs> so I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, shout out Southside. Uh, <laughs> we're talking like, you know, 27th and National, 23rd and National, then off to 35th and Greenfield area. So, mm-hmm. you know, that little, it's a little kind of a different different area now than it was when, when I was little. But yeah. hey, it's all good. The city changes. Neighborhoods change. Yeah, man. So what? Haven't, haven't been back in a while, though. Yeah. Well, I mean... You know, when we were growing up, it was, I mean, we lived on the, we lived on the edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, for, for those who are listening and watching and don't know, and we got to fill all these viewers in, Xavier and I, we known each other since we were in diapers. Like, yeah. our moms were best friends, and we hung out, man, we had... We had arguably like the wildest childhood. Yeah, we did. Oh, dude. I mean, like, just it's the epitome it's of just, the '90s, bro. Yeah, man. Like, just us dudes, little boys, running around having fun, and it was like parents kind of being like, "Okay, just be safe." Like, be safe. <laughs> you know, super soaker fights, ghosts oh, in the graveyard, yeah, you, water balloon fights, water balloon man, fights. We hung out in the alleys. Yep, in the alley. Um, it was like all the neighborhood kids got together. We were just kind of like meshing and vibing. And it was just kind of like, oh, who's this new kid? And it was like, this is my cousin Xavier. <laughs> it was just like, what? All right, you're one of the crew now. And it's just like, yeah. man, it was just a carefree time. Yeah, it was. Childhood was great, man. Yeah, I, it, I mean, I can't undeniably like your house when, when we come over, um, I was always mesmerized by the the walk-in closet with all the the toys. Dude, my dad, man, my dad hooked it up for us as yeah, a kid. Dude. Like my dad was just like, "Hey, you boys want to get some good action figures and some, some like really good toys?" Yeah. He did it. And then of course, everyone else, all my friends and everybody who came over, mm-hmm. we were just playing as little kids do. Yeah. And it was just like, man, any movie, any sci-fi movie, anything like that, it was mm-hmm. like, yo, it it's was there. it was a good time. It was, it was, it was a great it time. It was a very interesting childhood. Now, I don't think that many people understand, like, I how or yeah. why that, that, that happened and, like, how we were so blessed to be in that situation. But, mm-hmm. hey, man, I the parents did our best that they could. And, uh, yeah. man, we... 
I think we we just embraced what we had, and now we look back at it, and it's like, man, Let's kudos, go. give them, give give a uh, give a uh, give the parents a round of applause for doing the best that they could <laughs> on the south side of Milwaukee too. So again, shout out the yeah. south side of Milwaukee, <laughs> <laughs> man. But um, you know, we grew up. And yeah. that that, that uh, those memories will always be held, and and you know what I mean, the appreciation and the just uh, you know what we've grown up to be. Yeah, man, it's um, been it, it's been yeah. the trip has been long, but humbling. There you go. So growing up, um, what did you give your undivided attention to? What was something that really, really caught who you were? Man, I think the thing that it was. Uh, Art. art i think it's a lot of it is just art it's just like creating something um and just being with friends like that's i don't know like my friends were so close to me and they still are like i still have the my friends growing up from when i was four years old yeah everybody is still man i rock with those guys they are Blood, yeah. blood, blood brothers for <laughs> life. Like, yeah, you know, like I wouldn't dare turn my back on those guys. Like we are, we're bonded. You know, the one that I remember from childhood, Colin. Yeah, that, that's my, that's my boy. That's Colin. my neighbor, Colin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, uh, he's still in Milwaukee, you know, he's doing good. So he, you yeah. know, we're just, uh, yeah, man, those, 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 man, I feel like that and the type of schooling I went to with the arts and crafts, I went to a Montessori school on the South side. So that just really, that really molded who I was. Yeah. And you did, you know, a monastery and then, and then, you know, go into depth with that because I've always wondered about those schools and how they work and, yeah. and, and really just like, how do they dif differentiate from, from public school? Well, it, Montessori is a public school. Okay. So it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's MPS. See, I don't, I, yeah. Now I don't. I don't know what a regular quote unquote like grade school is like because I've never went to one. Yeah. I just went to Montessori school. So it's like there's just a lot of educational learning, physical things in the classroom. Yeah. So like when they teach you cursive writing, mm -hmm. it's like wooden letters that cut out and you have to like build like sentences and there's like, um, there's like, items for like math to help you understand math. Yeah. And it's a very like, like experience type schooling. Um, it's not just like paperwork and books and it's just a lot of art, a lot of like singing and arts and crafts and building and the self-discovery with like different materials and stuff like do, that. Do you feel it's more hands-on? Oh, it's, I, I, yeah, it's very, very hands-on. So it's, it's basically as if they're, they're teaching you straight off the back how to be independent. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, a, it's, it's definitely massively independent learning. Okay. Um, but then there's also groups. So like you're always paired with like other little kids mm -hmm. and you're doing, um, random activities that the teachers have for you. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Uh, and, and and what was the name of that school? That was Greenfield Montessori. It no longer exists because it's been merged with other mm -hmm. schools. So now I believe it exists as Fernwood Montessori, and that's okay. in Bayview. In Bayview. Yeah. Ah. And they left, uh, yeah, I think their two schools had merged, so that's oh, where it's at now. Oh, got you, got you. Man, um, so you went to uh, the monastery, and then... After after that, what grade did that go up to? That went up to eighth grade, but I didn't go there till eighth grade because mm -hmm. I went there to the sixth grade and then the schools had merged. So then I left and I went to a traditional middle school, yeah. Grand Avenue Middle School. Grand Ave. It was right across the street from the rave. From the rave. Dude. Yeah, yeah. He was out here. He's like, I got this candy. I got these Snickers. You want some, yeah, guys? Right. I know you're going to rave hard. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, it, that was a different experience because that was like, it's just different. It was kind of like, hey, you got social studies, you got math, you got English, and it was like boom, 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 and go home. Yeah. So it was it was a much different uh, experience and very structured. So which helped because that led to high school then. Yeah. How was middle school though? At like you know, I man, in in my experience, I'm pretty sure with every kid, you know, it's a battleground. How I, was it for you? 
I didn't, uh, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, man, I, I, I enjoyed see, it. Like, yeah. as honestly, like, it's so crazy. The guy, there was a kid that just came to America, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope he listens to this podcast because his name is Kalichi. He's from Nigeria. Okay. And Kalichi went to Rufus King High School, and Kalichi and I became BFFs. Like, he was just this kid that was new to this country, new to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, it was like, oh my God, there's snow on the ground. <laughs> like, yeah. he, had, he was completely culture shocked. So, I, I don't know. I guess, like, he, him and I, we, we clicked very well. And it was just kind of like buddies. And, uh, you know, every school has its ups and downs. But, like, I feel like I had really good teachers. Like, I was blessed with. I guess it was different for me because we had like five schools come all in one. And oh. it was. Yeah, that's a weird it experience. It was vicious. I mean,. Oh my God, man! Like it, 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 within those schools are the different classes. You know, you got yeah. your bougie, you got your you, it, it, do it. It was it was seriously, but you have all these school schools merge into this middle school, and it's in South Milwaukee, and it was it was a battle. What around. is it called? It was South Milwaukee Middle School. Interesting. But, um, I mean, I came from Lakeview, but you had E. W. Luther, Blakewood, you had uh, Rawson. Um. Yeah, man, you just <laughs> you, you had you had these schools come like merge in, and I mean, it, it was man, that's wild. I, it I, is, yeah, yeah. I never heard anything like that. The so. wild, wild South Milwaukee. <laughs> no, but <laughs> so you went to middle school. Obviously, middle school was it was it was it was it an was average good time. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was an average time. Like right? it was oh, it was cool. God. Like. I'm yeah. happy for I'm I'm happy for you because it, that wasn't for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, you went to high school. You went to Milwaukee School of the Arts. Milwaukee High School of the Arts. So that's leading up to where I went to high school, and that was the best, the best public education. I swear, man, that is okay. That school, man, I have that has a very special place in my heart because to get to, to get into that school, you have to interview, you have to audition, audition, yeah. So you okay. like so like they have different uh, points of interest. So it's like a there's theater, there's dance, there's musical instruments, there's vocal, creative writing, visual art. There's mm-hmm. all these different art forms, and so if you are you know, if you grew up playing like the piano, for example, and you're like, hey, I really want to go to high school of the arts and I want to be in the instrumental program. Well, yeah. you have to go and audition, play some sort of musical piece. Yep. And um, uh, I don't quite know that whole process, but th- this is the example. Um, I was there for theater. So mm-hmm. um, I had to basically come up with this diagram because I wanted to go into technical theater. Yeah. So I had to come up with this diagram. I figured it all out and then I had to present it to uh, the teacher. And yeah. I had like this one-on-one interview like in the wood shop sitting next to all like the, the, the sawdust wood. And it was just like this crazy experience. Yeah. And he loved what I did and what I, who I was and what I, it was, it was like a job interview. Yeah. And I was in eighth grade and it was kind of like, what is this? Like I had yeah. no idea. Like, but Hey, I got the letter saying you've been accepted. You're a theater major, and you start school on this day. And I was like, "Dope!" Like, so I know we've had talks, but there was two parts to that to to the the pr- program you were entered into, yeah, right? Yeah, for theater. And, and the majority of people went th- where they wanted to to be seen. Yes, yes, the- yeah. So there's there's the perfor- <laughs> there's the performance side, and then there's the technical side. And you went to the technical. I went to the technical side. Yeah, so. That what? was a very interesting uh, concept because the, it, it, the balance kind of the scale tips. There's more people that do the performance than technical theater. Yeah. So how, how was this experience like? And, and through it, it sounds like it really it brought out a, a different. It brought out a enlightenment within you. Yeah. You know, technical theater. It was so great because we knew every season what shows that the school was doing. So for like every fall, there was a fall show and then there was like a opera and then we had a spring musical. So we knew we had all these big shows on the big stages. Yeah. So we had to come up with my, my teacher. Yeah, he had to design and come up with like, hey, we're gonna do this set for this show. So like, mm-hmm. for example, one of the shows that we did was West Side Story. Oh, wow. That has a lot of different set pieces and different uh, scenes. 
So we had to come up with ways to build these these sets. We had to um, obviously build large wood sets yeah. and multiple stories because the act the the child actors have to go up some stairs or down mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So we had to like it's got to be like safety regulations and all this stuff. So like it was this huge building process. It was kind of like hey look at a blueprint. How do we read blueprints? How do we use t- uh, power tools and yeah. all this stuff? We were like we were introduced real early on to all these like lifelong actual yeah you know uh lessons that like things that we we we, you you can actually use for later on in life not besides y equals mx plus b from your algebra class well you 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 ended up doing this would you say um had you decided to go on the other side (laughs) do you do you feel you wouldn't be where you are today. No, first of all, I wouldn't be on the other side because I, I just don't want to. Pe- I don't want to perform. Yeah, I, 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 that's just yeah. the honest truth. Like I'm not mm-hmm. one to be like I'm an actor. I want to sing. I want to act. I mean, I just that no. Uh, I knew going into it, I saw what the pro- theater program was. I knew technical theater was at what was what I want to do because mm-hmm. it. And then during that interview process, I learned more about it. And I also got to like tour the school and all that stuff. So I knew like, hey, we're going to be hanging lights. We're going to be doing audio boards. We're going to be doing all of this stuff. And then we're going to be working with actual theater professionals in Milwaukee that come and be guest teachers for a little bit. It's like the, it's like the coolest experience, uh, how Milwaukee High School Yard set it up at, at the time when what I went you, there. What do you feel drove and inspired you the most to, to stay with that? Um, I, it's just the love of it. It's yeah. just, it's just, yeah, I, I love the process. It's like, hey, we have this script of this theater show and now we have to come up with this, this model and this mold and create something from that script. And it's gotta be beautiful. It's gotta be multi-dimensional and layered because, you know, it's gotta, there's gotta be some sort of effect and lighting t- plays a massive role in that paint colors, all that stuff. So it's kind of like, there's there's a lot of little things that you have to really focus on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and once you do, it it just looks really good. So you say this was the eighth grade? No, this was uh, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. That's what I thought. I, I, I was confused for a moment because I thought you said, oh my God, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, nice. well, yeah. Yeah, I was saying from the eighth grade, I had to be interviewed to get into that school. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I totally, no, no, I was I, like. Yeah, I, I think I kind of worded that a little weird. Uh, okay. but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is high school, you know, and, yeah. and it, you know, it brought the very best out of you. Yes. A hundred percent. And, and since then. This has led into the profession you've taken on. Yes, absolutely. It literally, like, after I finished my four years at High School of the Arts, I could have gone right to UWM for the theater program, which a couple of my friends did go to. Mm -hmm. And then others went to other prestigious colleges all over America. Not that UWM's not. UWM's a great school. They have a great theater program. And um, uh, I decided not to do that. I wanted to take the next step after theater, which was television. Yeah. And I was like, I, this is what I want to do. So I went to MATC, local Milwaukee My Area boy. Technical College. My man. boy. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, cheers to MATC. And uh, they are, cheers. Um, th- that, they are such a great little school and it's very underrated. Uh, so many people, are, they look at MATC like, oh, it's just a technical college. No, MATC, they, they teach real world things, man. It is a wonderful. You don't get you don't you don't fall into the debt trap. You don't. I mean, you just yeah. like, man. I think my total college education only cost eight thousand dollars for <laughs> for an associate's degree, mm-hmm. which is like mind boggling. It's like two thousand dollars a semester, but like I learned from the actual engineers that run Milwaukee Public Television stay, oh, uh, because awesome. Milwaukee Public, MPTV, PBS, mm-hmm. and MATC are in a partnership. Okay. So my classrooms at MATC were in the actual studios or in the little engineer rooms with the actual people who run the station. Oh, wow. So the engineers, like the lighting engineer, the sound design engineer, all these people, they're they're the actual teachers. Yeah. So you're sitting there working on actual shows that will air on TV as, 
your curriculum. That's amazing. No, it's it's the coolest thing. And so like that again, very thought thought out. Uh, I kind of was like, I need to keep advancing. So I didn't mm-hmm. want to go right. I didn't want to continue into theater. I love theater. I love watching it. And I love supporting it and donating to it. And that's great. But yeah. then it was like, hey, television is the next step because it's also it, it's a little safer job wise. You know, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of TV jobs out there, a lot of TV stations, stuff like that. So yeah. I knew, hey, I got to get into TV, and if it leads into film, even better. Better. Well, from the School of Arts to MATC, there's only one other person that I know. Well, he went right after high school. Yep. But he ended up in LA, mm-hmm. just like you. After MATC, you. How long was it here before you you went to LA? So after MATC, I will, well, during MATC, I was working at the Apple Store at Bay Shore Mall. And so I was working there for a little bit. I finished college and then I was kind of like, hey, I want to advance my, my knowledge and my skill set mm-hmm. and I want to go to a very particular school. And so... I spoke with my professors about it. They highly recommend and they pushed me for it. They're like, listen, if you can pull this off, this is like invaluable experience for you. Mm -hmm. So I flew out to LA for a weekend. I checked out the school. They wined and dined me and it was kind of all cool. They kind of, you know, schmooze you a little bit and they're like, hey, this is what we can offer you. Yeah. Please come. So I signed up and uh, about six months later, I said, Sayonara, Milwaukee, love you, but... There's other opportunities for me elsewhere. So I shipped myself out to Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, and then I started school the very next week. And it was at this little tiny editing school yeah. called Video Symphony. It no longer exists. They shut down. Ah. They collapsed. But it's okay. Um, it was this Video Symphony. How about this? Yeah. Video and Symphony. And you, you know, the, what's crazy about that is also those professors for that college, they also are professional editors in the industry. So they're editing films and TV shows and then teaching on the side. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like they're, you know, they're growing this industry because they love it so much. So that was, it's another unique schooling that I went to that transitioned straight from MATC that I knew, I was like, this this is where I belong. Yeah. And so I went there and it was a 14 month program. It's just a certificate type school. And you just learn these real world skills and um, deep, deep editing skills, how to meet, manage media, all that good jazz, a lot of TV stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I, on the last class, which is called job placement, uh, it's a five day class. And on the second day, I got offered a job uh, in the union. Wow. Out here in the engineers union, which is like mind boggling. Awesome. Yeah. So I, it was like this opportunity that just like, was so I was so blessed. It just landed right in my lap. I took it and I've just been off from there. There you so go. So it was just like, oh my God. Like I came out here, went to school. I was able to transfer my job. I transferred from Apple Bayshore to an Apple store out here. So I still had a wonderful working experience yeah. with whole new people, whole new set of like skill sets. So it's like like this tree of knowledge just kept growing. And then boom, I got this new job. Where they were, where like the guy, the VP of engineering, he believed in me. Mm-hmm. He knew I was a new student. He knew I was hungry as hell. And boom, he gave me the job. And he was like, "Hey, I'm going to train you for four weeks. If you're good, we'll keep you. If not, sorry." Well, safe to say, I stayed there for five years. Well, look at you now. Yeah. So, like, I mean, the experience is is only gone forth, and now you know. It's crazy how how paths crossed because you know we when we were growing up kids yeah you know there was that gap yeah there was that gap you know not that we didn't you know what I mean yeah not that there was anything wrong it was just hey I went to high school you went to high school yeah. our brothers you have this older brother the same age as my older brother yeah and they were so, both in kindergarten <laughs> yeah yeah so so they they obviously went off to college and it was kind of like hard to get everybody to hang together. out t- together and so that's kind of like. Where it was kind of like, hey, I went to high school, you went to high school, and well, yeah, da, 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 da. I, I, the 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 fact of the matter, we you know the the past went apart, and now here we are again. And then yeah, and you've been re, with the rebrand, and then this new look. You are the 
the person who's behind all this. Man. It is the magic that you bring to this show. And I, I couldn't be more grateful that you're you're here with me and now you're a part of this journey. And and just in the little time, how many episodes have seven, eight? I think now, I think I've done uh, seven or eight, eight. I think eight, eight with you. Yeah, yeah. You've Look. been you've been a, a great advisor. It, it, I mean, the production on the production of the visuals. I think that was the best conversation. One of the best ones yes. we had. We sat down. and You were like, "Hey, I'm going to buy my own equipment now." Yeah, I think it's time. And I was like, "I agree." Yeah. Like. And you, you haven't, you, you did not fail me on that. Oh end. man! And it's, it's turned into some, some special man. And you know, I, like I said, I, I couldn't be more grateful to have you a part of this. I, I love being a part of it, man. Um, you know, it isn't only that you do, v- v- uh, you know, video production and in nope. this technical type of work, you are unique. And, and, and the way I say that is because what you do professionally isn't the only thing you do professionally. No, it's, I do two things I, and you they're completely, they're completely opposite. opposite. You, you know, if, if people are paying attention to where we're at, where we're at, I look all over this room. There's leather machines surrounding us. Yeah, there's a lot of leather stuff. Threads there. right here. Yes, yeah, right. Oil cans. Oil above cans here. up. There's leather right she- o- over your left shoulder, right there. <laughs> there's literally leather everywhere. As everywhere. How did you? What drew you to this? To, is- to professionally making leather products. This is a long story, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to you know give you the good. The good version and short condensed version. Okay, so going back to Montessori school, it's all with your hands. Mm -hmm. Like everything, arts and crafts, it's like, that's what I like doing. I like doing stuff. And then boom, going to high school, building stuff and working with your hands. Everything Mm -hmm. is hands-on. Like the idea of sitting in a room, listening to someone talk to me forever and teach me something just bores me to death. So I have, it's like that inner creativeness has to come out. So when I had one, my first dog, he had this beautiful leather collar. Mm -hmm. I paid a lot of money for this collar. And I remember just begrudgingly paying this this money. And I was like, man, this is so expensive for this tiny little collar. Like this dog is only 18 pounds. He's this tiny little thing. And I was like, man, this is a lot of money for a, a leather collar. But I didn't know what it takes for the craftsmanship on that. And so then when I got my second dog, the same breed of the, of the first dog, he was this little puppy and he kept trying to bite that leather collar. And I remember sitting on the couch one night watching these two dogs romp around mm-hmm. and play and that little dog was trying to bite that collar. And I remember being like, no, 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 no. That was too expensive of a collar. Yep. So I took that collar off and while they played, I remember just studying this collar, looking at, how can I make this? I was like, this can't be rocket science. It's it's just, it's a little leather yeah. collar. Well, that's where I went down the dark rabbit hole. And I was like, all right, leather work. How do I do this? How can I make this thing? And then I just went to a local leather shop. At the time I was working in Houston for a, a big uh, sports company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I went to this local leather shop and I was like, man, I wanna make this dog collar, how do I do it? And the, the guys were like, all right, you need X, Y, Z. You need these tools, you need this and da, da, da. So I went home and I oh, I bought everything and I started messing around and I started playing with it. And it was a really ugly collar. And I thought to myself, man, this is, I can, this is not up to really good standards. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, I'm gonna figure this out. And that's when I started, and there wasn't that much stuff on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It was just like very, it was like kind of wishy-washy. There, like YouTube leather stuff did not b- blossom at that time. Mm-hmm. So then I was just like, you know what? All right, I'm gonna keep talking to these leather guys at this store, try to figure this stuff out. And and then I started playing with other ideas of like, hey, I was looking at belts. I was, I was studying how, like a belt that you and I would wear. Mm-hmm. I would go to different stores. I would go to like, I would go to like cheapest stores, look at their uh, their belts. 
I'm sorry, their their belts. And then I would go to expensive stores yeah. and I would look at their belts and I was just kind of, I'm like, listen, a belt is like virtually a dog collar. Yep. But it is a little slightly different. Anyways, so long story short, I just became just deeply obsessed, deeply obsessed with the quality of leather, the style of leather, how it just patinas, um, the kind of uh, the brass material that works with it, or do you want like nickel plated? Mm -hmm. Like that, I don't really care for that too much. I like the brass because it just makes it pop. There's just, there's a lot of factors that all went into it. So that's, I got, and I got to flex my creative muscles. Yeah. That's the biggest issue. I mean, that was the biggest thing for me was, hey, I got to work professionally doing what I like doing, enjoy. Yeah. And then when I came home, I got to hang out with my dogs and work on leather. It was just like, man, this is a match made in heaven. So that's where it all came from. And it stemmed from the love of my dogs and I wanted to make beautiful collars for them. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, it's definitely uh, turned into a full blown, full blown oh, it, passion. Oh my God. And, obsession. And, obsession and, is, the, is, is the- Obsession, passion, and with that, you know, you have, you decided to start your own company. Yeah. yeah. Van Plu yep. Co. Van Plu Co. That's my, that's my last name, Van Plu, and then Co for company. And so I started this leather company and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make what I know how I, and what I've just yeah. deeply obsessed over was dog collars. So I started making different style dog collars. And mm -hmm. then as I was making them and like some friends bought some and some other people bought some, I started kind of understanding what, what was wrong with them yep. after also my dogs wore them. And then that's when I really started understanding like, hey, this needs to be tweaked. This needs to be smaller. This needs to be better. So four versions later, yeah. now I'm at, I'm at a very, very solid collar that I think is like, it's there. super, super good. I mean, you've been, I mean, Nala been rocking the, the, the Van Pluco collars. That's right. Um, I was happy that I got to make her one. Yeah, man. I love it. It's, it's, it's quality. And, and I can't express to you, like, I'm grateful for that. Like it's, it's really the, the, the craftsmanship and, and just, I'll say it again. The quality, yeah, um, it's it's beautiful. Your work is 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 is, is there. Um, I am probably one of your biggest fans. I believe in you, um, but that isn't the only thing you do. Because I, I know you focus on collars. You're yeah, right. You, um, I'm expanding into expanding. Small, I'm expanding yep. into small leather goods now. So like small leather goods. So now, goods. right now, I'm in the process of. Yeah. A lot of people make wallets. There's a lot of leather workers mm -hmm. that make wallets. Great. I love it, and I love seeing that stuff. But I'm trying to make my own wallets right now, and I'm in the process of testing that, doing the whole same thing that I did with the collars, and trying to find my style of wallet that I want to sell with my name on it. Yeah. That I feel is like, hey. This is the one. This is the one. And also a belt. Like I just made you a belt the yes, other day. Yes, you did. <laughs> just, Got it on. Yeah, that's right. So I just made you a belt. And like, um, these are all the other little things that are mm -hmm. soon to come. So like, yeah. that's a little like. Even for the glasses. Uh, yeah. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got. Yeah. That's a that's a, a little secret project. But, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, disclose those awesome details that we are making. Soon enough. We're making uh, some sunglass cases with magnetic clasps. Some really good thread, uh, very unique thread that no one else is using um, that I'm trying to incorporate because I'm trying to just do something much different than what other people are doing. Well, you're, you're embedded into this leather community. And um, along with Van Pluco, you make videos. You have a YouTube channel that makes instructional videos on how to use the machines all these machines in, in in the background are what you've you've either may already made an instructional video for them yep. or you're soon to be making videos for them yep. and through that you've gained a lot of i mean some of the biggest names in the industry of leather yeah. world renowned at that yeah yeah um how has that journey been with, I can't say you're you're taking small steps. You're leaping. I'm trying. I'm trying. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, I'm trying. I feel like it's 
things are going so fast right now and I've combined two passions. I've combined my professional skill of TV work mm-hmm. and video editing alongside Leathercraft because I've noticed that YouTube was missing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are leather crafters that know just, they are so wickedly talented, like mm-hmm. so talented. But again, they are talented in one thing, and but they don't have the instructional video aspect of it. And that's no fault of their own. And so they're trying to pump that content out for YouTube. Well, I have a little bit of both. And I'm trying to make videos that help a lot of new people and then also videos that help people who have been around for quite a bit. So I've launched this YouTube channel with the idea of, hey, I have invested so much time and so much money into these leather machines that I'm like, hey, I have questions on how to fix them, how to maintenance them, how to repair parts. Mm-hmm. If I'm the only one asking these questions, that's that's impossible. That, that can't be because there's so many other people who own these machines mm-hmm. and there's no videos on YouTube for this. Yeah. Like this big machine right here that's sitting right in front of us, there's almost no videos on it. Mm-hmm. I, I did all the videos on it. Well, I, I, I find it, you know, and I've been following um, and, and it's inspiring. Again, and let me put this out here. While he's doing production work, while he's, working on his own company, he's also doing the visuals for Spearhead. Yeah. You are someone who who loves most don't don't li- like like it, but you love working under pressure. I oh, love it. It's it's it is it's, just it's like a, the adrenaline. It's, yep. From the minute <laughs> the minute I wake up and those bed covers come off and my foot hits the ground, I'm off, man. It is rocket yeah. fuel for me. And then obviously it's a fast start and it's mm-hmm. a fast crash at the end of the day, right? So it's like, yeah. there's so much to do in a day and there's not enough hours in a day for me to get everything done. So I try to do everything, right? Work full time, edit these videos full time, yep. uh, try to do spearhead full time, be a, be a dad full time. And yeah. it's just, it is so much, but you, it, it's all in the planning, right? The flowers is there, man. It's and all, you're very organized. I mean- I'm obviously staying out with you in LA. I get to, you know, I'm I'm learning who is Van Plue. Thank you. Um, but you know, it, what I find most amazing, even some of the machines you you get, you there's some you don't have no clue about. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And you teach yourself. Yep. Yeah. How to use these machines? That right there. That. I just picked up a machine yeah. two days before you got here. Yeah. It's sitting behind these cameras that no one can see, mm-hmm. but it is a new machine. And uh, those videos are coming out to YouTube real soon. But uh, I have to, I've never used this, mach- this machine before. Mm-hmm. I've only seen it in action at uh, on other YouTubers' we- uh, pages. And um, so I basically have to figure out and use it. I mean, I understand the basics and the concepts of it and mm-hmm. how to use it and and maintenance it to its basic 101 level. But yeah, I have to essentially work this machine into the ground, figure out how to break it and then how to fix it and then translate that information into a visual representation for other people to use uh, and watch it and learn from it so that when they buy this machine, they have a reference point that is true and accurate and high Mm. quality video content for them. Yeah. It's just, a, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, um, but I love it. I mm-hmm. love it. I love breaking these machines down because it's like, it's really hard to like, quote unquote, like break the machine. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, okay, look, if you're using a sewing machine, you may break a needle or it may not sew properly, maybe like out of time. You, you yeah. gotta fix that. You gotta fix it so that it is in time so that it sews properly change the needle. These are all these little, there's a lot of little tips and tricks. There's just so many little nuances that mm-hmm. you don't know until you're you're into the thick of it. Yeah. So like, like if you go and get like a custom tailored shirt made from scratch, that tailor knows all these little things. And it's just, it's those little things that take years to learn and just to come natural to them. Yeah, man. Well, you know, like I said, this work you do is inspiring. Awesome. I love um, it. Thanks, man. 
and I'll keep being that fan, you know, and, and you, you already know the, the, the same energy you give is the same energy I give back. And, yep. um, I truly believe in everything you're doing. Um, now going forward, yeah, you know, I, and, and this is the month that makes spear the first year of spearhead. It, it's the completion. And I'm proud to say, you know, throughout this month, you'll be, people will be getting to meet the team. Which is awesome, yeah. by the way. I <laughs> love this, this idea of, hey, it's first year of a spearhead. This is the, the team. This is what we're doing. This is who we are. Mm-hmm. This is, this is awesome. I'm so yeah. glad that we're doing this. I, I want to ask you why? I mean, other than, you know what I mean? Obviously the relationship we have, why do you, why do you believe in Spearhead so much I, in the way you do? It is the fact that you're, you are really showcasing the city that I love and I grew up in. Mm-hmm. I always have love for Milwaukee. Yeah. Yes, I live in Los Angeles, but you know what? Small town Milwaukee, baby. That is yeah. like, man, I'm a Bucks fan. I'm a, I'm a Packers fan. Like, golly, man. Like, Milwaukee is, you can take the boy out of the Midwest, but you can't take the Midwest out of the boy, <laughs> right? Like, you cannot take Milwaukee out of me. Yeah. I love it. Like, cheese head brats, baby. Like, give it to me. I love it. But- Spearhead really showcases a lot of the most important people. Like you have got some amazing talent yeah. booked and currently booked showcasing what Milwaukee's all about. Mm-hmm. I love it. That to I me me it. that to me means a lot. I like that you're showcasing who they are and why they're important to the community mm-hmm. of Milwaukee and why would I not want to be a part of that? Like to me that's just it's just it's all love for the city. I feel it's a win-win um I mean, all around, I feel like, you know, this journey I'm on since I've started is I had people tell me that my city wasn't up to par. Oh, my God, their city is way better. No. No. I mean, we're such a a special place. And and I mean, yeah, the guests to come and the guests that have already come on the platform, it's only going to grow. This can't stop. No, that's not going to stop. For egos out there. Man, believe me, you can be easily replaced with another yep. story. That's right. And, you know, the one thing I've always made clear, and you know this, I'm for the underdog. Oh, always for the underdog. I'm for the underdog. Oh, big time. Big time. If you if you can't represent the message and the, the pride I'm trying to show, yep. then guess what? We're still pushing for it. We're still pushing. That's right. We're still pushing for it. That's right. Um, thank you. I, Cause truly, this you know, yeah, they see the face, they see, they see. I, I do put in work. There, there's no doubt about it. You've seen it firsthand. Absolutely. Um, this is ongoing clockwork. Um, but it's we, we yeah. have so many conversations. Yeah, I mean, it's like daily deep conversations about hey, like the thought process on how we manipulate and and create an episode and how we shoot it and how we edit it. And there's just so many things that come into factor and it's mm-hmm. just, it's a fun process. It is. It's a fun process. And and for those on the outside looking in, they don't know what the outside looks like, but it's a lot of fun, y'all. <laughs> yeah. you guys, I mean, you, you, you gotta love it though. Like you do. Because, you know, some people are like, oh, I wanna do YouTube videos. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. It's. It is. And then they, when they start doing a YouTube video, they mm-hmm. realize, oh my god, this one video was so much work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I try doing that every single week. I think. I think the most thing I've. I've never cared about the streams. I've never cared about the views. Um, at the end of the day, it's the people that are going to watch. Yes. Yes. And for those that watch, I'm. I'm proud and I'm happy and I appreciate. Um, and it, it, to really just take your time out of your busy schedule to 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 see who these people are because they deserve these spotlights. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Geek Set, you got 
uh, Drace. You got you got Fred. You got Fred. We got Allie Faith. Allie Faith. Shout out Allie Faith. <laughs> you know. You know. I actually interviewed Allie Faith back in the day when I was in M- at MATC. For real? Yeah, yeah. I did a little TV show. We had to make a TV show, and I did yeah the future of radio. Where is it going? That was my concept. Yeah. And so I interviewed Allie when shout out back in two thousand and eight, two thousand nine, when it was Wes, Ronnie, and Allie. Wow, dude. <laughs> that's like the OG show. That's OG, that's bro. Like the, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> I miss that show. That was such a good show, man. They had the funniest conversations every morning. Yeah. Well, you know, going forward, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to have you. I'm happy. To, I'm, I'm like, yes, we did this episode. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in the next five? Man, that is a good question. I would like to be uh, a self-independent uh, mm-hmm. leather crafter, mm-hmm. you know, maybe doing some freelance video work because, you know, freelance uh, engineering video work. Um, I got those skill sets. So, like, I feel like I can bounce around to company to company and help a bunch of companies grow. Yeah. Um, but b- big time leather crafting. Mm-hmm. I want to take this to the next level. I think yeah. this this could be the next chapter in my life, the next, the second career. Yeah. You know? Uh, after a while, you work so hard in one career, mm-hmm. but you have to challenge yourself. For sure. And, and like, there's got to be a point when you say, hey, it's time to walk away. I need to do something new. new. I need to refresh my mind, refresh my heart and your soul. And it's just this leather thing has just really, really captivated me. I made so many, so many good friends. Yeah. There's This leather community is so so wonderful. It is, I just love it. Yeah. So, and then it's even more inspiring because I get to see what other people are making. Yeah. Stuff that like, I don't even know how they do it because mm-hmm. I don't have those skills. And they're, well, and then there's also other skills that I don't have any interest in doing, mm-hmm. um, but they do it and I love seeing them do it. And I'm just like, Christ, this is so amazing. Now, next five years, I would like to start taking more classes at trade shows, yeah. start learning a little bit, try to start picking these people's brains and grow from there. I'd like to grow the YouTube channel big time. Yeah, uh, I've been pumping out one video per week now, mm-hmm. um, fairly consistent. So that's, that's, I'm just, I'm very proud of that because it's yeah. a lot of, it's a so much work, so much work. Man, but yeah, you, you, I've I stay seen up, it. I'm, I stay up so late working on these videos late at night. And it's yeah. just like, hey, everyone's asleep. The house is quiet. All right, it's time to go to work. Time to sacrifice some sleep. Get these videos done. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no, this is this is real. Like yeah. it's just it's a dedication of love. And you're you're going forward. Um, you're actually soon to be interviewing. I know. I know. This is the this this is pretty pretty groundbreaking. So I have invested a lot of time, yeah. invested a lot of money, and invested just a lot of my heart and my resources into podcasting yeah for sure this is the future of what i think uh easy content to enjoy on social media Mm -hmm. a lot of people like great good conversations i want to showcase some of these old timers these classic people Mm -hmm. who are in this leather industry and i want to curate this new tv show for youtube so that is essentially what I'm going to do. I'm not going to give away too many details, yeah. but I'm going to create this YouTube TV show mm-hmm. all about leather work, all while I'm pumping out machine tutorials and other tutorials. For sure. And um, this is a part of the five-year plan and to hopefully grow that into a pretty big show that mm-hmm. I can uh, do full-time. If I can That's travel awesome. and do this show, sh- yeah. I made it, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being a part of my journey. Um, you know, it, it, it's you you it's crazy because to mo it's a it's a lot of work, but you make it look so smooth, bro. Man. You make it look so smooth. And it, and to me, that's that's the most amazing thing about you. It's 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 seeing the passion, it's seeing the dedication, it's seeing, you know what I mean, the love. Yeah. The love. Um, I've just been around this video industry 
for a hot minute, man. And I, I just, I understand it. I understand proper mm-hmm. processes. And I love giving back to people when, when uh, former students or current students, I should say, at Milwaukee Area Technical College, mm-hmm. when they reach out to me and they're like, hey, how did you make it in Los Angeles? Not many people make it out there from Milwaukee. And I'm like, this is how I did it. This is how, this I, is did how I did it. And mm-hmm. I will, I'll show you the blueprint. I can't, I can only show you what to do and you do it yourself. Yep. It's just how bad do you want it? How, are you willing to work for it and sacrifice literally everything yep. to come out to Los Angeles? Because this city will swallow you so fast. Yeah. It's like New York City too. It is. I mean, these are fast cities. They're big and there's just so much competition, but you you have, you got to grind for it. And I just, um, yeah, I, I just, I love it. I yeah. love it. I just, I can't tell you how much I thrive off of it because I it it excites me knowing, hey, I got to get all this done, but how can I get it done? Mm-hmm. And then when I start to see, when I see the path and I visualize it, I'm like, yeah. how can I get it done faster? And so I push myself. And so then all of a sudden I'll hit you up and we'll start talking about this, oh, this show. Sure. And we start, and man, the brainstorm and it's like, oh my God, da, 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 da. and then it's like, mm-hmm. boom, it's done. And then all of a sudden, you, all of a sudden I'll call you up. It's like, hey, check, check yeah. the inbox, check the inbox. And you're like, no way. And I'm like, yeah. it's done, man, it's done. So yeah. it, it's a lot of fun. And, and for me, it's a little challenging because I like to push myself mm-hmm. and so... I, I do it that way. Well, man, you know, this conversation um, has been, you know, getting to know you yeah. and really show, showing the world who is Stephen Van Plew. That's why I was excited to do this. Um, what advice would you give to upcoming people in production? And what advice would you give to upcoming or people coming up in the leather industry. All right, this is this is a good one. Mm-hmm. For production, it's very cliche, but it's the it's the truth. And the truth is don't be an asshole. <laughs> it really is it is don't be a jerk. Just you have to show up, show up early, do your job, do it better than everybody else. Yeah. Stay later than everybody else and watch everyone around you notices that and your name starts getting spoken of. People are like, oh my God, Xavier stayed later. He did this, da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden you start becoming the man. And that is, that's the blueprint. Mm -hmm. That's the blueprint in the TV industry. It is, you gotta show up early. You gotta work harder than everybody else. And if you don't know, if you don't know something, just say it. Don't be ashamed that you don't know it. Just say, hey, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Can you show me how to do it? Because I want to do it properly. Mm-hmm. I, I guarantee you 10 out of 10 times, every engineer is going to be like, let's sit down. Let's do it right now. They're going to show you because it's going to, it's going to help the whole team. Yep. So that's my advice is don't be a jerk. You, you better work three times as hard as everyone else around you. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to ask. Yep. It's, just, it's just that it really is. I know that sounds pretty cliche, but that is what it takes. It's those three things. Mm-hmm. For leather crafters, I would say take all the trade show classes you can. Take any any tutorial classes you can learn. There are some people that sell classes online. Take that and absorb that knowledge because there's so many different skill sets that intertwined from one style of leather craft to others, and they all kind of mesh. Mm-hmm. And I understand that leather tools are expensive. I get it. But if you can get a second job or if you start saving money and put money aside and you start buying one little tool, one little tool after another, you'll start amassing this amazing collection of tools. Yep. It takes a lot of time and it is very expensive. And then a lot of people kind of are like, ooh, do I want to stick with this? Well, just stick with it for a little bit Make a, you, and work on projects that excite you. Mm-hmm. Don't. Don't think about business right away. Don't think like, oh, I can sell, I can make these belts and sell them. No, no, no. Make yourself a beautiful belt. Make yourself a beautiful wallet. Something that you are proud of that you can use. And if you like it, sit on it for like a month Mm -hmm. and make it again. Keep making that product over and over again until you're kind of like, hey, 
this is a really awesome thing. Like it looks like it, it came from a department store. Yeah. Right. So hone your craft and just learn, 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 because it's the only way you're going to get better at leather crafting. It's leather crafting is just not something that you can just say, Hey, I'm good at it now. And mm -hmm. there's like, it's very subjective to be like, Oh, I'm a master leather crafter. And like, I don't, I don't know. Like that is a, yeah. that's a very, that's a very weird statement to say. Um, it's kind of like, like I'm a master doctor. I don't, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like what, what, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hone your craft and just learn. That's what I would say to new people getting in on it. And uh, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, I, It's just, you're going to ruin a lot of leather. You're going to ruin. Yeah. I have ruined so much leather and I've wasted so much money on good leather. And I'm just like, I think back on it and I'm like, man, but I needed that. You needed I needed it. that to be to where I'm at today. Yep. Because now I I can just pick up a piece of leather and I'm like, man, this is this is awesome. I'm like, and it's all of a sudden you're like, oh, what can I do with this? Yeah. You're like, uh, and then you're like, oh man, this leather this feels good. You're like, it looks good. The color is even better. You're like, oh my god, and then you start, and then sometimes you kind of like just don't use it. You kind of just hoard it. And you're <laughs> like, oh, I don't want. You're like, it's so beautiful. I don't want to touch it. But you got to learn to just put the knife to it and cut it. Well, man, um, it's been a pleasure. Hey, you know. thank you for having me, man. Hey. And thank you for coming out. Yeah. That is the big thing. Like so mm -hmm. many people don't know what it, mm -hmm. what it took to get this all set up and how to get this all situated. Yeah. But here we are, man. Here we are. Man, well, the, the paths definitely crossed and, you know, there's big things, big things in the work. You know this very well. We won't disclose any of that. Yeah. But yep. um, stay tuned. 2024 is about to be, and 2023 is about to be amazing. But yeah. 2024 is about to be just. Yeah. <sighs> it's booming. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud and I'm, I'm happy you're part of the team. I'm looking forward to the years to come working alongside each other building your platform, you helping me build mine. Yep. Um, you know, th that goes into the talks we've had. It's, it's, it's crazy because there's points where I feel like, am I the only one thinking like this? Am I the only one? Exactly. But it, through our conversations and everything, it's, we're so on the same level. Yeah, yeah. We're driving down the same the same road. Yeah. We're going down the same road. So I, I just, you know, in the, the upcoming years to come, I, I bro, we yeah. about to get it. We about to get it, man. We about to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I th again, I, I thank you. And, and before we go, how can people contact you? Where can they find you? And, and just, you know. Vanplu.com. There you go. That is, uh, that's, that's the website. Uh, YouTube channel is Van Plu Co. There we go. So it's just Van Plu. Uh, I have an Instagram and I have a Facebook uh, for the, the page, but it is not the biggest priority to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily believe too much in those platforms. I like them. They're mm -hmm. cool. They have a purpose. YouTube is the future. That is what I'm focusing yeah. on. That's what I love. I love the video content. I love sharing that. So YouTube, Van Plu Co. And then Van Plu Dot com. Well, another great episode. Awesome. It's time. But, you know, thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me. And with that being said, spearhead out. <laughs>